this has kind of been the season from hell for the Raptors. Yeah. I would definitely not mind a top five pick in this draft. There are a lot of interesting players at the top there. Just how are you feeling right now as a Raptors fan? Like, do you want, do you even care if they get the play in? Like, yeah, where's your head at right now? I don't care so much about it, but I also, look, if, if the thing I'm trying to remind people is that, like, because I know there's been this big divide between like pro tank and pro go for the play. Yeah. And I do understand the pro tank part. Like, I get it. The, the opportunity was there for the Raptors to have one of those weird blip years where it's like, okay, everything went wrong. You end up with this great pick, but you're not like starting from nothing. Like you're going to be able to add a great pick in a potential like generational draft, potentially, if some of these guys are as good as they could be to a core of Siakam, Ananobi, Van Vliet, now Trent, Flint. Like that, that is a very rare opportunity for franchises to get. So I totally get all that. The problem is it just didn't work out that way. Like this is what I try to tell people when they think that, you know, that they didn't tank well enough. It's like, the, the night the Raptors fell out of the top 10, finally, for the first time, it was I think it was like March 14th, March 15th. They fell out of the top 10, okay? In the first 17 games after falling out of the top 10, they went 5-12. and 12. And in those 30 days that they went 5-12, and 12, you, know how, you know how many spots they dropped further in the standings? Zero. <laughs> so yeah. then they start getting guys back and they start resting guys to the point where they're catching fines. Cause they are obviously tanking that game against OKC. If you look at their like crunch time lineup, it was like a rookie Flynn Gillespie. Yeah. Uh, I think hood Watanabe. And I can't remember who else. Like if you look at that where they went five and 12, then look at how they rested guys. Then look at some of the lineups they used. Like, it's like, man, what do you think they were trying to do? They clearly knew, like, they knew the same things we knew about the chances to get a great pick in this draft and add it to that court. It just didn't work because the teams around them were even worse, you know? Like I said, yeah. to go 5-12 and 12 and not drop a single spot in the standings is insane. To use the lineup they used that night against OKC and win an NBA game is hilarious, but it's because OKC's yeah. five-man lineup was somehow worse. Like, at this point, what I'm trying to say is, like, they even if they do crap the bed and lo- and go on like a, a six game losing streak, it's barely going to alter their lottery odds. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm just like, you know, just enjoy every game, see what comes out of it. You know, hope to continue to see growth from Ananobi and Flynn. You know, get Trent back in the lineup. See what like if if the young guys are playing well and they end up in a playoff spot because of it, and then who knows? Maybe they scare one of like Philly or Brooklyn in the first round. Just enjoy it because there's yeah. re- like the alternative. It's not like they it's not like they're selling out to try to make the eight seed and losing the first round, or they traded youngsters for veterans to do it. They, I think they actually had the intentions that were to go the opposite way and it just didn't work because there's too much crap around them in the standings. Yeah. So at this point, it's just like, enjoy it. It is what it is. Yeah. What we've been advocating is just enjoy this as like the Lowry for farewell tour. Exactly. Cause most know? likely he's going to get signed and traded. So enjoy yeah, him. Okay. I, mean, I, I still think there is a possibility he's back on like a two or three year deal and ends his career here. But I mean, it, it depends. It depends on what the sign and trade options are for him. If, you know, if they can add a, more to the, to the younger core, uh, depending on what other teams are offering, depending on how high they're willing to go with a contract for him. But I, I don't think it's completely out of the question that he's back for another couple of years or maybe even three years after this. But I think they're going to go hard for a center, especially someone like Holmes which if they give up Lowry, they're going to have around 20 million to work with. Yeah, they could, they could have anywhere. They could have like 25 mil to work with um, yeah. in, in a best case scenario. And that's, and that's while still retaining Trent because of he's an RFA. So, I mean, it could, it's a really interesting off season. And that's the thing too, like this team's whatever they are, 10 games under 500, but we know that this isn't actually a 10 games under 500 team. You know, this yep. is a team that back home next year with even just average health, and the guys continuing kind of on the trajectory they're on can turn this thing around so quickly. Yeah, we saw when they added literally like two below average leagues to league average centers in uh, in Kem Birch and Freddie Gillespie. They started winning. They start they're a winning team again suddenly. Right, like the, just a slight upgrade at the five position, yeah. just like did that much for this team. So yeah, a guy who can catch the ball and do just like average <laughs> big man things. Amazing what he was able to do for this team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Baines is not been not a fun no. beans year this yeah. year no. <laughs> thanks for watching subscribe here so you never miss the best clips from stretch the floor hit the links in the description below to find us on all podcast platforms and follow us on instagram